Do you think that you would have a civil war? Are you worried about that? What do you think will happen if we do nothing? You think more kids will be killed? I'm not. I'm not. You think I'm more not concerts will be shut up? More no, no, churches will? I'm not arguing about this. The court keeps allowing states to ban assault style. Your weapons. inability to do even the common sense stuff really frustrates me. So when do we say enough is enough? A string of high profile mass shootings over the past few years has spawned a movement that's calling for new legislation to outlaw so called assault style weapons. In particular, the popular AR 15. Assault weapon bans are depicted as life-saving, common-sense policy. The problem is that the definition of an assault weapon is totally arbitrary. An assault weapon is whatever is covered by an assault weapon ban. Jacob Sullum is a senior editor at Reason who writes about gun policy. The criteria that are used to identify assault weapons are things that have little or nothing to do with how useful or how deadly an assault weapon is in the hands of a mass murderer. We will finally ban these assault weapons from our street that have no purpose other than to kill. The federal government banned assault weapons in 1994 when President Clinton signed a bill sponsored in the Senate by Dianne Feinstein. Mr. and Mrs. America, turn them all in. The bill expired 10 years later, but Feinstein is sponsoring a new version of the law. Meanwhile, seven states in the District of Columbia have enacted their own assault weapon bans. There's little evidence that the 1994 legislation reduced gun deaths, in part because it was mostly a symbolic gesture. Unless you really delve into the specifics of what these bills do, you don't understand how utterly arbitrary they are. In the original 1994 bill and in the new version of the legislation, assault weapons are not defined by what they do, but by how they look. Feinstein's current bill talks about things like pistol grips, adjustable stocks, threaded barrels. Uh, in other words, you can have a gun with any one of those features, it is now an assault weapon. Exactly the same gun without those features is not an assault weapon, and in fact, there are a bunch of examples uh, like that. Let's compare the Ruger Mini-14 ranch rifle with the AR-15. One looks like a hunting rifle, and the other looks like a military weapon. They fire at the same rate, they fire the same caliber of ammunition. And because they have similar barrel lengths, the ballistics are almost identical. Now those are single shots. If I wanted to fire this on full semi-automatic, all I do is keep firing. Another misconception is that so-called assault rifles are automatic weapons, which fire continuously until the trigger is released or the gun runs out of ammunition. The federal government banned the manufacture of new automatic weapons for civilian use in 1986. Most modern civilian guns are semi-automatic, which means they only fire one round per trigger pull. But if you're talking about, you know, how many rounds can you get out of the gun within a certain amount of time, any semi-automatic is going to fire, be capable of firing the same number of rounds. Originally built for the battlefield, a defining characteristic of the AR-15 is the speed and power of the bullet. Another myth is that assault weapons are more powerful than other guns. In reality, the power of a firearm depends mainly on the cartridge, not the gun. Again, let's compare the Ruger Mini-14 ranch rifle with the AR-15. Both can shoot the same 223 caliber bullet at the same velocity. You will see that lots of uh, hunting rifles are more powerful, uh, can do more damage uh, you know, at the same distance uh, than so-called assault weapons. One of the most common cartridges used for hunting is the 308 Winchester, which has more than double the impact force when compared to the ammunition used in an AR-15. Another common refrain is that assault weapons can inherently fire more rounds than other guns before reloading. But it's the magazine, which is just a detachable box and a spring, that determines how many times you can fire. And many guns that are not identified as assault weapons accept high-capacity magazines. So again, this is not um, a feature that distinguishes assault weapons from other kinds of guns. Banning guns based solely on appearance is counterproductive, and it makes it difficult to have a good faith discussion about effective solutions to gun violence. I'm not going to say everybody has to own an AR-15 because it's such a great gun, um, but people have their reasons for wanting to have them, and the government shouldn't be second-guessing those reasons without a very powerful justification. Um, the justification offered for banning assault weapons is virtually non-existent because it doesn't make sense.